Tonight, record numbers. St. Louis County has seen an uptick in coronavirus cases. What health experts are doing about it? And voting issues. A local woman says her mail-in ballot hasn't been received weeks after she sent it. What city officials are saying could have happened. Plus, slowly recovering. After a rough patch, Itasca County has seen their coronavirus activity dip. From CBS3 Duluth, this is the CBS3 News at 6. Good evening, I'm Kristen Bakke. Thanks for joining us. St. Louis County set a new record for COVID-19 confirmed cases today. They reported 115 new positive cases and three new deaths. Health officials are now worried these cases could soon overwhelm our hospital care facilities. CBS 3's Emma Quinn spoke with health care officials today and has more. St. Louis County Health Director Amy Westbrook says she is concerned with this spike in cases. She says most of these cases are coming from community spread, meaning people are getting the virus from people they know or they don't know where they contracted it. As of right now, 21 people are hospitalized in St. Louis County with eight in the ICU. While those numbers are rising, they're seeing another strain on their systems. Hospital officials say they're seeing an increase in hospitalizations for other illnesses. They say that's mostly due to patients who didn't come to their preventative care appointments earlier this year when the pandemic started. Now they're getting sick and having to head to the emergency room. Uh, while they urge people to get the preventative care they need, hospital leaders are also pleading with everyone to keep following the state's pandemic safety guidelines. Um, we need to slow the rate of spread um, for the health of our community um, so we don't overrun our hospital care, hospital systems. With colder weather and the holiday season right around the corner, health officials are asking you to avoid large gatherings and public spaces, acknowledging this is a hard time for everyone, but it's in an effort to keep everyone safe. Now, Essentia Health and St. Luke officials say you should go get the care that you need, whether that's for diabetes, hypertension, or a colonoscopy appointment, that the hospitals and clinics are safe, and that you should go get the care that you deserve. Thanks, Emma. Minnesota is reporting the highest number of COVID cases in a single day since the pandemic began. The state reported nearly 2,900 new cases and 32 deaths today. The state's totals now stand at more than 142,000 cases and more than 2,400 deaths. Minnesota's latest test positivity rate sits at more than 7 percent, an increase over the past two weeks. Meanwhile, cases continue surging in Wisconsin as well. Health officials reported nearly 4,900 new cases and 51 new deaths today. Both numbers are among the highest single-day totals for the Badger State. Duluth's COVID-19 saliva testing center has been open for about a month now. So far, county health experts say it's run 13,000 tests. About 6% of them have come back positive. County experts say that testing volume does not translate to a higher positivity rate. After a brutal start to the month, Itasca County's COVID-19 situation continues to improve. This morning, health leaders provided an update reporting 86 new cases in the past week. Nine more people were hospitalized. Two are currently in the ICU. Earlier this month, the county's positive case rate per 10,000 residents was in the 50s, but now that number is 37. As Itasca County continues the long road to better rates, leaders are asking everyone to stay vigilant and stay positive. Our on-campus students have done a really nice job in housing. To this point, we're up and running and we show no signs of, um, of slowing down. If you have the opportunity to make somebody's day, wave at strangers. My kids are always like, do you know them? No, just slaving. With Halloween on Saturday, experts are asking everyone to follow COVID-19 protocols and consider virtual events with friends. Dave's here for a quick look at the weather. Dave, I think a lot of people are pretty excited about those Halloween uh, temperatures because they seem each day we seem to be getting a little bit warmer. It seems that way, but we're going to do a little bit of a roller coaster. It's okay. cool today. It'll be cool again tomorrow, a little bit warmer Saturday, and then it chills down Sunday. But then once we get into Monday, temperatures could start going up to much warmer than normal. But this morning, we started off fairly decently after a couple of cool mornings previously. For many towns, it wasn't too bad. In the lower 20s, even upper 20s for some places, cool spot was International Falls at 11 above. I think tomorrow's numbers are going to be a little bit cooler than this, going from the perhaps the teens in the arrowhead of Minnesota 
to the lower 20s for the rest of the region. Eyeing up the upper Midwest situation, what we've got going on for sunny Friday will be yeah, sunshine, thanks to the high-pressure cell over our three states. But there is a new low coming in from the west that could bring us a chance for some showers on Saturday, but that will also help warm things up a little bit. Friday, sunny, but on the cooler side. High temp only 35, the normal is 45, but I think 50 is not out of the question this week. I'll tell you which day that will happen coming up in just a bit. Ooh, looking forward to that. Thanks, Dave. With five days until the 2020 election, a Duluth woman is stressing the importance of tracking your mail-in ballot after hers was never received weeks after she sent it. CBS 3's Leanne Valdez shares her message and explains what to do if your ballot goes missing. This election is the most important one in my lifetime. Duluthian Jenny Hansen has never missed a chance to vote. And I've voted since I was 18. I've voted in every election in person. The 2020 election was no different, except Hansen decided to vote by mail because of coronavirus concerns. But after dropping off her ballot at the post office and going online to track it three weeks later, it had still not been received. Is this normal at this particular election time? And Director of Administration services in Duluth, Chelsea Helmer, says no. That's the only report that we have had from someone who placed their ballot in the mail and it was not returned to us. Helmer adds ballots their department gets in the mail are processed and sent to the absentee ballot board and each ballot is tracked immediately. But there could be some lag time. There is a little bit of lag time between the time that we receive it and that it goes through to the AP. AV board and then it's processed and updated in the systems. Their office is seeing a trend of ballots without a signature. They're what we call naked ballots. So they come without a signature envelope. Um, and that has the voters identification information on it. Um, unfortunately, in that situation, we're not able to track down the voter who submitted that ballot. We just have the ballot itself. Hansen and Helmer both stress the mine. importance of tracking your ballot. I just think there are so many issues at stake that there may be no turning back from. Definitely use that Track Your Ballot tool on mnvotes.org. If you're, you're concerned about something, give our office a call. Helmer adds, if you're worried and unless they have accepted a ballot for you at their office, you can still go vote in person. We'll have a link to track your ballot on our website. GOP campaigns in Minnesota are asking late absentee ballots be separated. The campaigns for President Trump and Republican state legislative candidates are petitioning the Minnesota Supreme Court. They're asking clerks to separate all mailed ballots received after Election Day in case of legal challenges over their validity. The petition filed yesterday is the latest challenge to Minnesota's seven-day extension for absentee ballots. The United States is barreling toward Election Day in what is believed to be the most litigated race in American history. The Associated Press reports even issues like where poll watchers can stand are turning into legal disputes in some states. Hundreds of lawsuits have already been filed. The legal actions run from a dispute over whether guns are allowed near polling places to more complicated matters that already have reached the Supreme Court. Congressman Pete Stauber kicked off his five-day final push before the election. Stauber calls it a power play, touring all 18 counties in Minnesota's 8th Congressional District. He says he will be traveling about 1,200 miles between now and Monday. Stauber held a kickoff event today at his campaign headquarters in Hermantown. He says as he tours the Great Eight during the pandemic, his campaign will work to make sure safety protocols are followed. During this pandemic, campaigning is a little bit different. Uh, social distancing, wearing our masks, and, and many of my events are outside, and they're going to be outside during this tour as well. Stauber says this is a final chance to meet with voters ahead of Election Day on Tuesday. Meanwhile, Stauber's Democratic opponent, Quinn Nystrom's campaign, released a statement today saying she completed her 18-county tour on Saturday. It says her campaign held events outdoors with masks and social distancing. The release slammed Stauber's campaign, claiming he's holding multiple indoor events, endangering the health of others. Jobless claims are down in the last report before the presidential election. The U.S. Department of Labor says some 751,000 Americans filed first-time unemployment benefits last week. That's down by 40,000 the week before. Unemployment claims have been going down in recent months, but they're still higher than before the pandemic. Wisconsin's Republican Party says hackers stole millions of dollars from their account. 
The party's le leader says hackers stole $2.3 million from the account used for President Donald Trump's re-election efforts in the key battleground state. The party chairman said they noticed suspicious activity a week ago. He contacted the FBI on Friday and an investigation is underway. The party says there is, quote, no doubt the theft puts Republicans at a financial disadvantage in the final week of the race. Still to come on live local CBS 3, hunters are calling it a win while others say it's a disruption. We'll have the details next. Today's high of 32 is still well below the normal of 45. Tomorrow we won't be very close to it either, but come Saturday we just might get there and that could be the start, the impetus, the driving mechanism of a warm spell coming up next week. We'll talk about it coming up after a break. Live, local, CBS 3 News at 6 with Kristen Vaki, Anthony Matt, Kelly Hinson, and weather with meteorologist Dave Anderson on Live, local, CBS 3. The Kelly Clarkson Show, weekdays at 3 on CBS3. Welcome to Medical Insight, a weekly healthcare feature brought to you by the experts at Essentia Health. Here's your host, Louis St. George. Today on Medical Insight, Dr. Brett Friday, medical oncologist at Essentia Health, explains the importance of oncology clinical trials. One of the big reasons that patients are part of clinical trials is to learn how to treat cancer better. And I think there's an altruistic benefit for every cancer patient who's receiving treatment. You know, they sort of reap the benefits of all the patients who were part of clinical trials in the past. We should always strive to get better. And that's what trials are. It, it's striving to get better. It's learning more about the cancer. And, you know, as an institution, I think Essentia's culture fits with that ideal. And I know that myself and my colleagues and everyone in the Cancer Center really feels that way. Clinical trials through Essentia are safe thanks to multiple levels of independent review, and they afford patients anonymity. Our rural geography in north, you know, northern Minnesota is a different population than is present in you know, Manhattan, New York City. And so if we want results from a cancer trial to really be broadly applicable to all those populations, you have to have patients participate from all of those different areas. As medical director of the, of the, of the research program here, um, that's what makes my job worthwhile. Many people, you know, believe that being a cancer doctor is a very difficult job, and at times it really is. But there are also really gratifying things. And when we participate in trials and when we get results back from those trials that change how we treat, you know, how we treat cancer and improve cancer treatments, you know, that's what drives me. Essentia's commitment to research helps deliver the best care possible to patients. For Medical Insight, I'm Louis St. George. To learn more about this and other health topics, visit EssentiaHealth.org slash Medical Insight. Uh, moving to mornings, obviously, with Jenna, I had worked weekends with her, and it was great. We're always there to be able to still joke around, still have that personality, but still obviously bring the news, the weather. Caitlin has been there since day one when I first started at CBS3, and she's super knowledgeable about meteorology. She loves it, and she's so interested in teaching other people things about it as well. And I just think we're such a good pair for that reason. Watch Jenna and Caitlin in the morning at 5 and 6 a.m. on CBS3. It is the question that matters the most. Donde esta? That takes you behind the story. Robert. It drives everything we do. It is the foundation of trust. Who did all of this? And the truth that propels us forward. What did you make of that? It is the question. One word, three letters long. And without it, our purpose. That's news. And our freedom fade. This is why. CBS 3 News is brought to you by Fond du Luth Casino. CBS 3 Weather is brought to you by Heritage Window and Door. Now, the CBS 3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. Well, just a few minutes ago, we looked at the low morning low temperatures, which were in the 20s for most towns, with the exception of International Falls started off at 11. Here's how things finished uh, before the sun has started to set in our area here. And we only made it to 27 in International Falls, 31 in Hermantown, 35 for Hayward, and 32 for the folks in Ironwood. So all counts 
cooler than normal. Tomorrow's high temperature should be a little bit warmer than this, but still cooler than the normal of 35 degrees. It's Saturday when we do start to go back towards normal, and after that, perhaps warmer than normal, with the exception of a bit of a stumble coming our way on Sunday. And we'll show you that on the seven-day forecast in just a bit, but right now we take a look at the current conditions. They're coming in from Duluth International. 27 is the temperature, 63%. The relative humidity, southeast winds going seven miles per hour, and as the night goes on, should become dead calm for a couple of hours. Air pressure, that's going up as well, 30.15 inches of mercury. But tonight, as temperature and dew point get closer to together that should create some clouds and we'll go from being fairly sunny at least in Minnesota today to being mostly cloudy during the overnight. Current temperatures upper 20s for the upper peninsula and we're looking at 28 to 30 here in northwestern Wisconsin. Minnesota numbers are very similar running from 20 International Falls to 30 on Park Point and down towards Moose Lake and on the fringes of our region we're seeing that on Grand Marais shoreline and for Grand Rapids too everybody else in between. Overnight low temps tonight could be dipping into the teens again for parts of the air ahead of Minnesota, lower 20s for many of the rest of us. Not too bad for the overnight lows, but the daytime highs haven't been anything to write home about. Doppler map right now shows higher pressure trying to control our region, so we did have sunshine in Minnesota today. It was a little bit cloudier for Wisconsin and Michigan, and now the clouds are trying to thicken overnight, but again, they should break tomorrow as higher pressure flexes its muscles and brings back a sunny day. For Friday, sunny and cool. Saturday, be a different story. It'll be cloudier, warmer, and a little bit wetter, with a 30% chance for showers coming our way from this low pressure system. This will already be gone by Sunday. Then it cools down again on Sunday. If we go to 45 on Saturday, it becomes only 30 on Sunday. But after that, it starts to warm up. We hit 40 on Monday. And then 50 for the rest of the week is very possible. Tonight in Minnesota, look for a range of low temps from 14 near Ely to 25 degrees on Park Point with a mostly cloudy sky for everybody. In Wisconsin and Michigan, should be mostly cloudy. And folks in the UP still could get a little bit of precip popping up. Low temps there, 18 to 22 for tomorrow with sunshine. Wisconsin and Michigan run from about 36 to 39 degrees. About 6 degrees cooler than normal. Minnesota numbers run 34 to 37. Inland, 39 by the lake. Again, cooler than normal there, but with sunshine. Here's the extended forecast, Kristen. For those who like the snow, it's bad news. For those who thought we got it too early, this is great news. 35 on Friday, 45 on Saturday with that slight rain chance. Then down to 30 Sunday, but back to 40 on Monday. And then 50 hits us on Tuesday and may continue smacking us here all the way through next Thursday. Looks good to me. Thanks, Dave. In a win for hunters, farmers, and ranchers, the Trump administration today announced the gray wolf is no longer on the endangered species list. The gray wolf was nearly wiped out in the early 20th century. Since the 1960s, conservation efforts have helped the population recover, though they have not returned to much of their past habitat outside the Great Lakes. The Secretary of the Interior announced the wolves delisting at an event in the Twin Cities today. He says they used factors laid out in the Endangered Species Act to make that decision. It's now up to states to decide whether to hold hunts and how to manage them. Hunting is a, uh, a regular uh, management practice, but the decisions on, on hunting need to be grounded in science and grounded in an understanding of that particular species. The secretary said wolves are resilient, but acknowledged human activities remain the biggest threat to their survival. Minnesota group Howling for Wolves released a statement in opposition of removing the wolves' protections. They say current wolf population trends in Minnesota are at their lowest since the late 1980s. According to the group, allowing wolves to be hunted or trapped disrupts wolf packs, which can cause unpredictable effects. They call the decision to delist the wolves political against the science and puts the wolves on the path to extinction. Well, tonight, right after the CBS 3 News at 6, a half-hour political special you'll see only here on Channel 3. After a tense summer as it relates to race relations, we're digging into data that shows the Black Lives Matter movement and similar groups could prompt a flurry of action at the polls and increased voter turnout. For the last month, we've been analyzing the role race could play on this year's election. We talked to a handful of different people who explain what could happen with the black vote next week. Here's a quick preview. So it's kind of like everybody seeing what's going on. It's hard for people to just sit there. But we got other races saying like what the, how they treating people of color is not right. It's not ethical at all. 
Look for the full segment tonight right after the 6 o'clock news. Coming up in sports, the Northwestern Tigers football team will not play football tomorrow night as planned. Kelly Hinseth has the details next. Get your new John Deere mower from Duluth Lawn and Sport, the region's largest power sports dealer. CBS 3 live cams are brought to you by Kohler Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac. You're not just getting a car, you're getting Kohler. It's starting to get cold outside. Northwest Outlet is running with fresh new inventory to keep you warm this fall and winter from Carhartt. Men and women know when they shop Northwest Outlet for Carhartt, they know their stuff. They carry more styles, more sizes, more colors, and more flame retardant Carhartt than anyone in the Northland. Jackets, jeans, shirts, gloves, bibs, hats, belts, socks, and sweats. We've got them all. Check Northwest Outlet's gigantic selection of long underwear along with Carhartt work boots, rugged but comfortable. Northwest Outlet, home of Carhartt Superior. It isn't always easy living in the Northland. Up here, we have to count on our neighbors and let them know they can always count on us. I have the honor of serving our community in the State Assembly. Down there, I'm fighting to make health care more affordable and broadband more accessible. My opponent has other ideas. He wants to help companies like Foxconn give tax cuts and bailouts to billionaires, leaving us behind. I'm Beth Myers, and you can always count on me. Our experience with uh, Heritage Window and Door was great. My wife called and got someone right away, which is really great to actually speak to a live person. Very painless, a uh, very easy process. One of the things that we were really looking for was not only a high quality window, but really the installation itself. As a homeowner, you really want your window installation done right the first time. And that's not always the case with other companies. And with Heritage Window and Door, that was the case. It was a great experience. Quinn Nystrom and I pay $600 a month for two vials of insulin and that's with insurance. Meanwhile, drug company profits go up and up. It's why I refuse to take their money for my campaign. But Pete Stauber has taken tens of thousands of dollars from corporate interests and voted five times against lowering the cost of prescription drugs. I approve this message because I know we literally can't afford Pete Stauber in Congress. With ongoing racial unrest in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and across the nation, we're digging into the role race could play on the 2020 election. CBS 3's Anthony Mapp hears from Northland black voters about what's driving them to the polls and what it means for our local and national elections. All of what we're experiencing is only amplifying what's already there. CBS 3 News presents Race and Campaign 2020, tonight at 6.30 p.m., only on CBS 3. We've been through a lot this year, and it all feels so personal. Your health and your family's well-being, the businesses you built, your kids' education. So many of you have told me that you want us to move forward, get this virus under control, rebuild American manufacturing, support innovation and small businesses, make America work for all of us. I'm Tina Smith, and I approve this message because we get it done when we work together. The Kelly Clarkson Show, weekdays at 3 on CBS 3. Just a day before they were set to take the field in Barron, the Northwestern football team found out that their game versus the Golden Bears is now off. That is due to Barron not having enough players to field a team in Friday's contest. The reason, whether it's injury-related or COVID-related, was not clarified. Northwestern Athletic Director Brian Smith admits it was tough to learn the news, but he's satisfied with what his team has already been given this season. Obviously, there's disappointment that we, we, don't, we didn't get a game. We spent hours, you know, last night, this morning, trying to find a game either in Wisconsin or northern Minnesota, and uh, we're not successful uh, at finding a game. But I, I think we're, there's still that sense of um, we're really happy we got to play six or seven games so far. He added the res they respect Barron's choice and the team looks forward to the remaining games of their schedule. In Minnesota, there is one football game on the schedule tonight. It's a nine-man matchup between a pair of unbeaten teams. Cherry is off to their best start since 2009 at 3-0. They'll take on Southridge at Mount Iron Buell. The winner will take over first place in the North Blue Conference. We'll have highlights tonight at 10. 
A major story that has been developing in college hockey over the course of this week. Mitchell Miller, an 18-year-old University of North Dakota player who showed a promising future as a fourth-round draft pick in the NHL, has been renounced by his now former NHL club. The Arizona Coyotes announced today that they have se severed ties with Miller, who was widely criticized after an Arizona Republic article recounted Miller's bullying and racist taunting of a black youth, Isaiah Meyer Crothers, when the two were 14 years old living in Ohio. The Coyotes issued an apology to the Meyer Crothers family. President and CEO Xavier Gutierrez said in a statement from the team Thursday, we have learned more about the entire matter and more importantly, the impact it has had on Isaiah and the Meyer Crothers family. What we learned does not align with the core values and vision for our organization and leads to our decision to renounce our draft rights. The organization also apologized to the victim and his family. The NCAA has announced a new policy they're adopting for this year only. The Division III President's Council approved a blanket waiver to allow student athletes to compete this season without being charged a season of eligibility. The chair of the council, Tori Murden, McClure says this one-time waiver will provide students with the flexibility to make the necessary decisions for their academic and athletic experiences. This is, of course, included for students, athletes at St. Scholastica, UW-Superior, and Northland College. And finally, it turns out the Minnesota United's win over Colorado last night was a big one. Major League Soccer announced today that the Loons officially clinched a playoff spot. It was determined based on their points per game standing. Multiple MLS clubs will finish their season without playing their 23 scheduled matches, so they determined back in August to go with points per game instead of total points. It will be Minnesota's second consecutive year in the playoffs. They're currently the four seed in the West. That's going to do it for sports for now. We'll more here back tonight. Kristen, I'll send it back to you. All right, thanks, Kelly. Well, we have some breaking news right now at 6. If you're voting in Minnesota, your ballot must now be received by 8 p.m. on Election Day. That ruling from Minnesota's 8th Circuit Court of Appeals just moments ago. The court overruled the state's plan to allow mail-in ballots to be received by election offices within seven days of the election. Reaction is pouring in tonight. We'll have more at 10, including what you should do now if you mailed in your ballot or still have to vote. Also tonight on the CBS 3 News at 10, Minnesota Supreme Court Associate Justice Paul T Tyson is being challenged for his seat by Michelle McDonald. Tonight at 10, we hear from both candidates on this nonpartisan race and their hopes for the November 3rd election. All right, Dave, let's get a final look at the weather. I love all that sunshine on the seven day. Yeah, really, six of the seven days ahead will be sunnier than not, and only one day has a chance for a little bit of precip. That day will be Saturday. So for Friday, it'll be sunny, but a little bit cool. High temp only 35, the normal is 45. We get to normal on Saturday with a bit of cloud action and a 30% chance of rain showers because of the warmth. When higher pressure comes back in Sunday, initially it cools us down, back down towards 30, but the backside of the high brings up a southerly wind, and it gets clear, sunny, and warm near 50 beginning by Tuesday. We'll see you at 10.